Welcome to Martha Runs the World, a podcast with a new take on running, fitness, and all things health-oriented. I'm Martha Hughes, your host, and each week I present a new topic that is of interest to all runners. Hi, and welcome to episode 300 of Martha Runs the World. Thank you so much for joining me. 300 episodes. I can't think of a better number to to celebrate and talk about my race report from the weekend. It's been a long time that I've been recording my show. This January, it will be six years, and I have never missed an episode. Not one week have I not recorded. Even through my darkest times, I have always recorded an episode without fail. (laughs) All right. But this week is really, really exciting for me. I am so stoked to tell you all about my race this past weekend. And I am giving you every little detail that I can remember. (laughs) Maybe I'll forget some things. So you'll have to forgive me for that. But I am just so happy to talk about it. This past weekend, I completed the Ruth Anderson Memorial 50K in San Francisco. First time doing that race. And what fun that was. It was just so exciting. I have been wanting to, to get back into ultra running or ultra racing. It's been a long time since I've done an ultra. The last ultra I did was in 2020. It was that was the coastal trails, the San Francisco one day that they used to do at New Year's Eve in um in the Presidio at Chrissy Field. They don't do that anymore. Unfortunately, due to a questionable coyote attack on a famous ultra runner, yeah, questionable in quotes. <laughs> Some of us don't think it happened, but I'm not going to get into that controversy today. All right. Um, but yeah, it was a jam-packed weekend in San Francisco in that it was also Fleet Week. Fleet Week happens Every year in San Francisco, it's a way for us to celebrate and to recognize the huge contributions that the U.S. Navy has ha- had in San Francisco. It's a huge part of our history and a huge part of the city. And I love Fleet Week. They have a huge air show with the Blue Angels, and I love them. I was raised with planes. My dad was an aero engineer. And he loved planes, so I love to go watch the air show just to think of him. And I watch it every year. I took Friday off because I didn't want to miss the show. And I wasn't sure how I was going to feel on Sunday after my race. So Friday, I went down to the Marina Green, which is the perfect spot to watch them. I got to watch the Marines do their silent march routine, which is just so inspiring and beautiful. And I watched the SEALs do their parachute jump. Not only did I watch the Blue Angels, but they had an F-22 plane, which is my favorite fighter jet. (laughs) I'm really into planes, growing up with planes. The F-22 is just an amazing jet. Anyway, so I watched that Friday, and then I didn't walk too much. I got some nice exercise. That was cool. And I went home. I ate right. I ate sensibly. I got some rest as much as possible on the night before my race, but no one really gets rest the night before their race. That's just, that's a farce. (laughs) No one really, really gets good sleep the night before a race. I got good sleep the night before the night before, but not the eve of my race. I woke up at four. I had reserved the Uber ahead of time. I've never done that before. So I thought I'd do that just in case it was going to be hard to get an Uber. So I did that a couple of days before. Because I reserved it, I got. I decided, okay, I better get it at five twenty because I wasn't sure how long it would take me, and I wasn't sure how bad it would be. My Uber shows up twenty minutes early. It's like, come on, no, I want it at five twenty. I don't want it like at five. And these things said the Uber's going to be there in two minutes. I wasn't ready at all. No, I was not ready at five o'clock. So I text the guy. I said, "You're a little early. Give me about five minutes to get ready." So I got all my stuff ready and I was out there and he showed up and that was fine. I got to the race a little early. On the way, I noticed it was windy and misting. And the race is held at Lake Merced, which is on the west side of San Francisco. 
And if you're not familiar with the Bay Area or San Francisco City itself, the weather here is so different. Usually in most of the U.S., the weather is is the same on one side of the city as it is on the other side of the city. It's Cincinnati. It's going to be the same weather all over the place. It's not going to change. In San Francisco, the weather is very variable because we it is a city that is surrounded by the ocean on three sides. So it can be a 20 degree difference from my neighborhood to the west side of the city. I live on the east side of the city and it's warmer where I live. We don't have any ocean where I live. It's pretty well urban atmosphere. It gets very warm where I live. We don't get the fog. We don't get the mist. We don't get a lot of that. It's it's very warm where I am, relatively speaking. On the west side, they get the fog, they get the wind, they get the ocean breezes, they get all that. And where Lake Merced is, it's very mild, very, it can be cold weather, actually, to be perfectly honest. So I thought, oh boy, it's going to be really cold there today. But when I got out of the Uber and got my stuff out, it was pretty nice. It wasn't bad. It wasn't misting. It was okay. And the weather throughout the day was all right. It wasn't bad at all. When I got done with my race around five, then it started misting. Then it started getting cold. But it wasn't bad throughout the day. So I was pleased with that. It was overcast all day long, and I didn't hear any planes, so I think so. When I got done, I I read online that they had canceled the air show for the day, which is too bad for the people who showed up, but because they, they can't fly. Obviously, if it's too foggy, it's just too dangerous, but they did the show on Sunday, but they, they had to cancel Saturday, but the weather for running was fine. It's a really, really nice race. There's not a lot of people who do the race. It's a small amount of people, but they really should get more people. I will say this, though, that when I started, everyone but me is fast. (laughs) Everyone just took off. All right. Uh, let me, let me, let me get back to the beginning. All right. So everyone started showing up and getting their stuff. And, uh, we walked, you walk about a half mile to the start of the race And we walk there and the start of the race is at 7 a.m. So we start and everyone, like I said, at the start just takes off like rabbits down their way. And not me. I'm a very slow starter. Some people start fast just because they get caught up in, in the excitement of the race and they start going. And I'm always a slow starter. I slow, I start slow and I taper off as the old DSC saying is I am not a fast starter. I don't get caught up in that. I just don't. I am slow. I'm slow the whole time. I'm not going to get faster. I'm the only one left. Everyone else is gone. They're long gone. I'm there. But I just had to tell myself that's okay. They can do what they want. I'm not going to follow them. I'm going to do my own thing and just concentrate on my race. And that's what I did. I had a great time. I just concentrated on my own race. There's a 50K and a 50 mile. And because of the 50 mile, there's a 12 hour time limit. The 50K is seven loops around the lake. The lake itself is 4.4 miles around because the start is a quarter around the lake. It it turns it into 31.1 miles. They work it out. I'm not a math person, but they, they get it down right. So now everything's going great. There's some hills. It's not really super hilly. There's just a little bit of elevation. It makes it interesting, so it's not too terrible. So, and and, and it's a really pretty lake. There are some old icky RVs, unfortunately, but the people who live in them don't bother you, so you just kind of have to ignore them and just go past them. And it just it it just makes for part of the mystique of Lake Merced. And there's a golf course there, so you can look at them. You can try to count the golf balls, as my friend Michael says. So you can do that. And every time around, you have the aid station there, and you can set up your stuff. If the aid station doesn't have what you want, you can bring your own things. The first couple loops, I was doing my intervals of running and walking, but after two, my hip was not into it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run a whole lot 
farther distances than nine miles. I don't know if that's the only amount that I can run. If if I can only walk farther than that, so be it. That's what I have to do. But I was okay with it. So I just walked most of the way, the entire rest of the course. Down hills, I did run a little bit. So that was kind of fun. So I can run a little bit if I need to. I kept going now. Now, when I tried to eat food later on, I didn't eat a lot of food at first, but I tried to eat food later on. I ran into trouble. My digestion system didn't accept the food later on, so I was racing from porta potty to porta potty. Now they had two porta potties at the aid station at the top of the race, and then there's one that they have at the at the lake at two miles on the south part of the lake. And so I would have to go from two miles to two miles. <laughs> so that wasn't fun, but I did make it every time. So I'm not complaining. <laughs> and I realized that the same foods that I trained with were the foods that were giving me problems. And I think I've got a solution to that, that I talked to with a friend after when I got home. And I'll tell you about that a little bit. But during the race, it was a little distressing and I wasn't sure what was going on with that, but I couldn't let that bother me. I couldn't let that get to me. I kept going and started to get warm. The sun was trying to break through, but we did get a little warmth there. So we did get a little sun later on. So it got warm. I kept my hydration up. I kept drinking a ton of water. And I would say about the fifth loop, I could tell that I was going to get cramps, be probably because I had been walking pretty fast. So I took my roll of CBD gel with me to roll on my ankles just so that they didn't cramp up. And that was probably the smartest thing I did all day. And I ran into another, or I walked, I met another uh, participant, cat who was having problems with her shins. She was having shin pain and I, and I gave it to her to roll on her shins. And she said later on that that was the best thing and she didn't feel any pain afterwards. So good on her. So I, I'm very happy that, that she felt better with that. If it helps you, I think it's the greatest stuff in the world personally. And I'm glad that she was able to find relief with that. I love it. I do not go to a race without it anymore. I tell you, this is just the best stuff there is. <laughs> Really, it's it's awesome. And there were times where I would have to like sit and take a couple minutes and just wherever I was and just let my stomach settle or let my hip settle or something, just two minutes. I I never let myself sit more than two minutes. I would time myself, okay, this is one minute. Okay, two minutes. No matter how I was feeling, all right, that's it. I got to get up, got to get keep going. So I would keep myself limited to two minutes. And also during those two minutes, when I got back to the top, when I would get back to the top of the lake where my little chair was and everything like that, I would fill up my bottle with water and they had tailwind at the aid station. So I cannot have that. That stuff will make me sick right away. No, nope, that, that my, my digestion system cannot handle at all. I've known that from past history. So I get water and noon, noon was good. Noon did not bother me. So I have noon throughout the day and that really, really saved me. Um, but I would at that time take advantage to charge my cell because I have a very old phone. I refuse to, to buy a new one until that one dies. <laughs> It's like, nope, I'm not buying a new phone until that one completely kicks the bucket. And I think it's seven years old, so it's very old. So yeah, I'm not buying a new one for a while. It's like, no, 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 no. All right. So I would charge my phone and I would uh, get what I could, what I thought would sit in my stomach, although a lot of stuff did not sit. I, I did have a banana with some salt on it. That set okay. That was all right. Uh, there were a few things that said all right. Um, as I said earlier, I did talk to my friend Carlos after the race, and he said you need to eat a lot during the beginning of the race so that later on in the race, when your stomach can't handle anything, you can forego the food and you should be all right. And I said, okay, that makes sense. All right, so eat a lot in the beginning so you have that base, and then towards the end, 
I would, uh, I guess, just drink water or hydration mix or something. The noon uh, set perfectly, and I think with the bubbles in the noon, that really, really helps my stomach a lot. As a matter of fact, when I got home, I had a couple glasses with noon in it, and that felt really, really nice. Uh, noon is is savior. I tell you, that stuff is amazing. I love it. So it it was hard. I mean, it was really, of course, it was really, really hard. And I I was thinking, oh boy, after the sixth one. Well, let's let's go back. Let me go back a little bit. After the fourth one, I said, "Oh, I have three more of these." Really, I said, "Really, I've got three more loops." So, okay, three more. I've got four done. I can do this. So I kept going and kept going. And then a- after, you know, it was funny though because after the sixth one, the seventh one didn't feel as bad as I didn't feel as bad after the sixth one as I did after the fifth one. So the last one wasn't as terrible as the second to last one, if that makes sense. I think my adrenaline was up a little bit up in that last one. But then there was just a teeny little bit left. I felt kind of sick to my stomach, but I sat a little bit and I I said, okay, two minutes. Remember your two minute limit. So I sat for two minutes and I only had a half mile left. So I got up and I finished it. And I was last finisher of the 50K, the very, very last. I was DFL, dead freaking last. And I don't care, but I finished it. And they put a ribbon up and, and I passed it and they all cheered for me and there are a ton of people left. It wasn't like when I did my first 50K, the Shasta 50K, when the when the only person left was the race director and his assistant and they didn't even have any water left for me. <laughs> If you can believe that, yeah, that's it. They had a cold burrito and a, and no water. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> but this was an incredible race run by amazing, amazing people. Let me tell you about the Ruth Anderson Memorial 50K. They are the nicest people you could ask for. Everyone, every single person there was so nice and so friendly and just so welcoming and just what wonderful there's no reason why there shouldn't be more slow runners or walkers at this race it is a 12 hour time limit there should be lots more people like me or even even just a, even a little faster than me there should be lots more it shouldn't just be all speedy people there should be a lot of people doing this race. A lot of people. It's got a 12-hour time limit. If you're looking for a race for your first 50K, this should be on your list. This is a perfect race for your 50K. You shouldn't have to worry about it. You've got a ton of time. You can walk it if you want to walk the whole thing. You can do this. This is the race for you. These people are so amazing and wonderful and friendly, and they will help you the whole time. It's just a really, really nice race. I think they are just incredibly, incredibly warm and and friendly, and and I, I just got nothing but cool vibes off them. Just great. What a great race. What a great, great race. All right. <laughs> and And then the cool part about it is that well, well, the Uber, the way there with, with the tip, the guy was a great driver. So I gave him a nice tip, but it was $40. <laughs> That's a lot of money, 40 bucks. The cool part is that I could take the bus home. So the bus stop was across the street. Of course, I looked like, like, you know, cat dragged me in and I had my chair and my big bag with me. And probably there was like salt on my face. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> So I, so the bus driver looked at me really funny, but I'm getting on, getting on the bus and I smelled like, you know, I, I don't know, I smelled horrible. So I get on the bus, paid my fare and everything, get on the bus there. And then I, all I had to do is transfer to the 38 and I got home and it took me a little while to get home, but it was a lot cheaper than $40. Let me tell you, I couldn't not afford another $40 cab ride. It just way too much for out there. I was able to take the bus home. So that was easy. And so getting there was a little bit more than I wanted, but uh, what are you going to do? 
at least I could run a race, at least I could do a 50K in the time limit. The problem around here is that most 50Ks have such a tight time limit that I could never finish them, and they're really far out of town, so if I want to do them, I have to rent a car and get a hotel room and yada, 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 and all that fun stuff. It, it gets a little, little complicated. I am on the waiting list for the Hunter Thompson 50K. I thought I would be able to sign up for it, but unfortunately, when I went to sign up for it yesterday, it was all already sold out. And I didn't want to sign up for it until I finished Saturday's race because I wasn't sure if I could finish it or not. And I didn't want to do a DNS again, do not show up. Again, I already did that with this race, and I didn't want to repeat that. I had already signed up for the Hunter Thompson race a couple of years ago when my left hip gave out and I had to have hip surgery. That was what a fiasco that was <laughs> that whole year. I signed up for the Hunter Thompson and then my hip gave out and then I signed up to volunteer and then I got COVID. <laughs> oh gosh, it was awful. This is a series of events that I could not control and I could not predict. And I feel really bad I'm sure they think I'm a flake, so I don't know. I just hope I can get in. And if I can't, I can't. I already asked for the day off. I got the day off. So I'm going. if I can't get into that race, I'm going to go up to uh, the headlands and just do some trail running. I also decided that I'm not going to go for my first 50 miler at the boot, boot Lake Boogie. I just think that's pushing it too far too fast, especially since I had it this hard of a time at my first 50k in four years. I don't want to do that much too soon. I'm still a little antsy on, on trails, so I'd like to just do a shorter distance on the trails. I'm going to do the 33 miler at the bootleg boogie instead, and that's far enough. That's really, really still a long distance for me, and that will still be the longest distance I've ever gone. So instead of going way, way farther. I'll go a little bit farther and it'll get my confidence up on the trails. And I'm looking towards maybe the cool moon in June to do my first 50 miler, but we'll see. We'll look towards that in the coming months. So that is that. And I, like I said, I had a really, really good time. I don't have a t-shirt yet. They're supposed to come out either today or this week. Sometimes they're supposed to mail them to us, but yeah, it looks like a cool shirt too. Anyway, so that is my race report, and I am going to get super serious about losing weight, and And I signed back up for the gym, so I'm going to go back to 24-hour fitness at least once a week and get that going. So I am just really psyched. I am just very psyched and excited and very happy, and my confidence is up higher than it has been in months. Really, this is the best I've felt about things this year, really this year, I I feel really, really good. And I look forward to the holiday season, to be perfectly honest, and Halloween and, and Thanksgiving. I have a race. I have going to do the turkey trot, of course, and I'm going to run the five miler. Last year, I only did the three. I'm doing the five this year. Yeah, things are different. This is a different year. All right, so I hope you are doing well. Oh, 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 I also wanted to give you my uh, favorite song of the week. It is, I didn't do that last week because it was such a long show. I, I didn't want to also make it that much longer. But my favorite song of the week is by Dead Can Dance. It's called Opium. It's so cool. Of course, every Dead Can Dance song is great to run to. Their music is so haunting. It's so mesmerizing. I love their music so much. But this song, especially, was really, really wonderful to listen to during my race. It just takes you out of your mind and out of anything that any worries or anything and you just you just listen to it and and the time just melts away. You don't even worry about things and all of a sudden you're going, Whoa, I went farther than I thought <laughs> And that's what you kinda need sometimes when you're running and listening to music. All right, so that is it. The, the website is MarthaRunsTheWorld.com. If you want to email me and let me know what your favorite running song is, it's MarthaRunsTheWorld at gmail.com. All right, until next week, let's tie up our shoelaces and go for a run.